Hello, this is Dylan Panko with another quick tip from Bungalow to Go. On this episode here, I want to try to demystify electrical panels for you to make the decision making when you get to the store a little easier. Oftentimes when people go to the store, they're simply overwhelmed with the number of choices there are on the shelf. And quite frankly, I understand there are a lot to choose from. So let's go over some of the variables to make that decision a little bit easier when you get there. So first question I ask people is are you mounting it outside, exterior, or inside, interior? In this instance, this is an interior panel. Note, an exterior panel is going to be made a lot differently because it has to be exposed, or it will be exposed to the elements, so it needs to be seal a lot better sealed. So, the next question is, how many amps am I drawing? This is an 8 feet by 18 foot house, and it's basically a granny unit. There's no kitchen, there's no shower. We're not drawing a whole lot of amperage in this house. With all the lights on, a laptop, and a box heater, we're only using about 15 amps. Not a whole lot. Now, on our first house that actually we used halogen bulbs, had a kitchen, a shower, so on and so forth. With everything running, including a laptop, espresso machine, a hair dryer, and I forget whatever else, we were only pulling about 26 amps. Not a whole lot. So in this instance, this is a 100 amp panel, so we're not even 26 amps or the 15, we're still pulling well under the 100 amps. So 100 amps is fine. Can just fine at all. So the next question is how many spaces do you need? How many breakers are you going to have? Now I've seen them where uh, people go minimalist on them and actually do all the lights on one, all the plugs on a separate one, and maybe another one for the exterior plugs. Me, I'm a little different. I have both lights uh, divided in half. So if one half of the house trips, the other half is still illuminated, so you're not left in the dark. The other thing is the plugs in throughout the house are on several different breakers. The bathroom's on its own circuit, outside's on its own circuit. It gives me a little bit more control, and when things go out, it doesn't take the whole house with it. So how many spaces do you need? This is a 12 space panel, and you notice, or maybe you can notice, I still have four spaces left available, so I have plenty of room. The next question to ask yourself is how big can it be? Now they always come the same width because they're meant to go into a 16 inch on center stud bay, so they're 14 and a half inches width, so you can slide it into the stud bay and secure it. But they'll oftentimes come in different heights. Now the, the height you do want to consider because you don't want it too big and too unsightly. The, now the other thing to point out is there's two different types where this one's a sub panel, but there's also what's called a service entrance where a meter actually goes into it. You don't want that one. You want a sub panel because you're actually already going to be plugging into something else where it's got your service entrance coming in from the grid. So if you have any other questions or comments, please feel free to shoot them our way. We're here to help. If you need more help with figuring out amperage, we can help you with that, but there's also calculators online. If you go searching on Google or Yahoo, you will find an abundance of amp, meter, amp uh, calculators that will help you determine how many amps you're probably going to be pulling. So thanks for watching.